Hello, I'm Ryan F9 and this is a tank slapper. Eee, if I said your suspension is the perpetrator and you could click into a perfect setup to prevent carnage, wouldn't you? Most slappers are caused by lifting the front and regrounding it offline. Like three homophobic men, your motorcycle is 550 pounds of pure desire to be straight. So it corrects the tire, but in its fervor overcorrects, overcorrects, overcorrects. And the first cause of this mayhem is because you wheelied. Second culprit, the front lifts incidentally under normal use. Your front end is too light. The sport bike should be 50-50 under a tucked rider. Adventure bike's 45-55 under a standing dentist. But don't buy anything. And we can fix this with preload. Say my shock has a spring rate of 100 pounds per inch. Then my 200 pound ass compresses it two inches. Now, if I preload 100 pounds of tension into this spring, it will push back 100 pounds of my ass, leaving the other 100 to compress the spring one inch. Changing your bike's geometry is that simple. If your tank slapper was caused by a light front end, remove some preload to drop the front or add some to raise the rear. You're a discerning gentleman. You like your corn pops al dente. You should like your motorcycles just so. Third cause, your sag geometry is correct, but a bump throws the front tire airborne. And this happens when your fork bottoms out, so the only thing left to give is liftoff. Solution being progressive springs. And like the Godfather, there are three parts that start strong, then get weaker and weaker. So your suspension is supple for soft bumps, but hard enough to not bottom out. It sounds fancy, but multi-stage springs are cheap. Fourth wobble is when you bottom the rear shock under acceleration and cause pumping. Same problem, so progressive springs? Eh, don't bother if your shock has a linkage. The linkage is progressive in itself, so your spring doesn't have to be. See, a shock provides the most leverage when it's perpendicular to the swing arm. A linkage lets the shock get more perpendicular as the swing arm travels. So your spring pushes harder and harder the further it goes. Lest it bottom out and the tire become your suspension, which is bouncy since air-filled rubber is completely undamped. Damping is just slowing the movement of a spring, usually by forcing oil through a tiny hole. Expensive shocks will have damping adjusters. I can slow my compression or my rebound by turning a screw that closes the oil hole. Smaller hole, slower shock. If you're frugal and don't have adjustable damping, that's okay. There's probably still oil and a tiny hole in your fork. You just gotta switch to a thicker or thinner fork oil for more or less damping. Why? Because very bumpy roads. Too little damping and your shock will bounce after the bump ends. But too much damping and you'll slow the shock so much that it can't rebound fully in time for the next bump. And they call it packing. Each bump taking up and up and up and up more of the travel until you have none left. So if one crash is caused by over damping and another by under damping, then I'm only ever half protected. And surely we can do better than a bulletproof crop top. Remember that damping adjustment is just plugging a tiny hole with a tiny needle. 
That is trivial to control electronically, even with high precision and speed. Just stick a sensor here and another here. When this gap closes fast, shut the damping hole. When it closes slow, open it. Your suspension setup can perfectly match the road in near real time by adjusting damping 1,000 times per second. It's called continuous damping control. Doesn't rank well on Google these days. Now to set this up on your bike is quite simple. Just start with $25,000 and f off. I can't afford it, so I knock it. And semi-active suspension is only semi because you're still limited by a finite range of travel and damping coefficients. In theory, a bump could be so high or so fast that it overwhelms the range of your system. Fully active suspension would therefore be our final solution. But Hitler ruined that conjunction of words, so instead we call it Skyhook. Whereby a vehicle gives zero shits about the ground underneath, riding as if suspended from a hook in the sky. This is only possible with electromagnetic wheel position control. No springs, no dampers, no limits. Except for that it would drain a standard motorcycle battery in seconds. And it's probably boring to ride, but Skyhook will become feasible as electric vehicles become energy dense. So we repeat the question. If you could click on perfect suspension, would you? Thank you very much for watching. I just want to say to my tea sipping subscribers that I'm going to be at the Adventure Bike Rider Festival in Warwickshire in June. So if you want to come meet over warm beers and teach me to ride on the wrong side of the road, then I'll see you there. <laughs>